Well, good morning, everyone. A great, a warm welcome to you all. It's a lovely, lovely day, beautiful autumn's day to celebrate so much of who God is and to worship him together. It was really a privilege to be able to come this morning and to see lots of the early bird people streaming out of the church. There were record numbers. How many we have this morning? 49. So uh, we're going to have to have the early birds in here, I think, soon. It's going to be really good. So it's lovely to see you here this morning. Today we're focusing on a particular psalm, the theme of which is about trusting in times of stress. Um, is anyone here who is feeling unstressed today? Really, really relaxed and life is everything it could be. One person. Oh, I'm really good. Well done. Really pleased to see it. So this, uh, this today might have some relevance for you, I hope. And it certainly does for me. We're just going to say a few words about what's coming up. And I wanted to be able to uh, look at some of these events, not just as information, uh, but rather as t areas for prayer. I think notices, we've heard them so often, every week really in church, that if we turn them into items for prayer, they become slightly different, don't they? Because quite a lot of them are not relevant for you or for me, but they're all relevant when we think of them in terms of what we can pray for. And you can, of course, find them in the, uh, the mailings that you get. If you don't get them regularly, please do sign up for those. But let's just remind ourselves of one or two things. The service of Thanksgiving uh, today at 3 o'clock uh, is time to remember our loved ones, remembering with thanksgiving, particularly those who have died uh, over this past year or maybe longer. And it's a time to give thanks for them and to be still, a real time for reflection. Time maybe to invite somebody you know who's been recently bereaved to come and have some space to remember with thanksgiving. Secondly, there's an opportunity on the 20th of November to have a, a, a sort of surprise lunch. And it'd be great if you can sign up on the board in the foyer there to either host or be a guest for lunch together. Please do sign up by next Sunday at uh, 1 o'clock. The next one has uh, a real uh, excitement feel about it. Christmas is coming. And uh, I'm delighted to say that this church also has a, a, a choir, a special choir. Those of you will know over the years we've had a special choir for Christmas. Um, Debbie, who's leading this, would love and encourage people, whoever you might be, even if you can't sing very well, to just sign up and come. This is an opportunity to really get to know other people, to feel part of something which is so, so important at Christmas time. And as we sing God's praises in the carols and the music of Christmas, it can be a fantastic witness to so many people who perhaps only come at Christmas. So please do sign up for that as soon as you can. Let Debbie know and come and use your voice to give glory to God. Next one is uh, about a community action tea on the 27th of November. And that's an opportunity for people to reach out to uh, the elderly in Malvern. Uh, if anybody can help by supplying cake or sandwiches for this event, uh, please do contact Angela. It's a real opportunity to reach out to our people in need, and there are plenty of those. Moving on. <laughs> Christmas lunches along the same lines. We would like to host that, uh, some Christmas lunching for people who might otherwise be on their own. So please don't get in touch with Angela again for that one. Thank you. Okay. Let's come before God and recognize the opportunity we have to use Scripture as uh, uh, an inspiration for us, whatever our circumstances might be. And the words of Psalm 62 are a tremendous testimony to somebody, probably King David, who was under a massive stress and pressure as his life was threatened, to be able to express 
something that is deep within us, that faith that God can be trusted. So let's stand together. Let's just be still in the presence of God. Thank you, Lord, for your presence with us. A presence that never fails. Thank you for your peace that is in your presence. Thank you that it feeds us and that you heal us. Thank you that we can join in these words from ancient scripture to affirm again that my soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall never be shaken. Oh, man. So let's raise a hallelujah, an opportunity to just stir our souls and to say to God, you are worthy of all our praise. And you might hear not just the keyboards, not just the guitar and Lucy's voice, but you might hear another few instruments which are hiding behind them all in the form of a computer which is being multi-tracked through the system. And we're really grateful to our sound tech team and for Zach and Chris and uh, setting, setting this up. So let's go for it.
that's that uh, that yearning to praise you and to defy those things that come against us. Help us to use our voices, take our spirits, take our souls to defeat those things that come against us. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Please do be seated. I'm, uh, I'm really excited about this uh, next part of our service because I'm going to ask Naomi and uh, Samuel to come forward in a minute and uh, just to, uh, who have been taking part in a thing called Icing Pop. Now, Zark, along with Liz, Miz, where, where's Miz? Is she, is she here yet? Yes, hello, Miz. It's great to see you. They've been just fantastic in the way that they've helped uh, as they found this organization that seeks to help children in schools and in churches come together to praise God, to find a real sense of excitement in doing that, and reaching to people, to children and families who would never otherwise have the opportunity to do that. And you've seen thousands and thousands of children over many different places uh, experience something which I think I've never spoken to any child who's done icing pop that hasn't really enjoyed it, including my grandchildren and my daughter's uh, school where she's the head teacher. And it's just absolutely wild. Now, I want you to hear from the horse's mouth, as it were, and these wonderful young people are going to uh, uh, tell me their experience of what uh, you think the, the best thing. First of all, it starts off in school, doesn't it? The Icing Pop team come into the schools and they practice the songs with you. Can you tell, tell me, Naomi, what do you think was the best thing about having Icing Pop in your school? Singing and dancing. Lots of singing and dancing, yeah. And all your friends are joining in, and it uh, didn't matter whether they went to church or not, they all had a really great time. Well, I have a really favorite song. It's, it's, it's the one where there's a clock in, and you get to do the. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You get to do that. So the dance movements are a really important part of this, aren't they? They're, they're really great. And I think in a minute, we're going to actually do one of the songs and we're going to use that dance movement. Can we, can we do this? Yeah. <laughs> we might have to do that another time. I, we can't do it today because we uh, haven't got it set up. We're going to do another one called Hey, Hey, Hey. You know that one? Yeah. Okay, we're going to do that one in a minute. So hold, hold, your, hold your dance moves for now. Hey, Hey, Hey. That's right, you've got it. Right, second question is to Samuel. What was it like in church when you did it? Because there was loads of colorful lights. All the lights. Fantastic. All flashing lights and different colors and sorts of things. So it was like a real performance, wasn't it? A very exciting, a bit like being in a disco and things. So, yeah, I think we should have a bit more of that in church, shouldn't we? Okay, Derek, got the lights lined up. Next Sunday, let's get them moving. Right, last question. Would you like to answer this one? If there was a school, another school, apart from the one that you're in, and was thinking about doing icing pop, what would you say to them? You should have a go because it's really good. Oh, you should definitely go. Yeah, let's give them a very big clap. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, stay up here. Now, the children who are in I Sing Pop, who know these dance moves, the hey, 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 goes like this. Come up to the front because we're going to get the rest of the congregation. Please come and stand up, everybody else, because we're going to enjoy these movements. If Miz will do it from the back, you can show us the movements. I know you're not very well. Oh, you can follow Miz. Get a little hand in the air. This is going to be spectacular. Have we got those colored lights yet sorted? Okay, everybody else stand up. And we're going to play on the video. You'll be able to see the person doing the dance moves on the video and the words to Hey, Hey, Hey. Let's go for it. Here we go. Let's have it really loud. Sorry. 
dance moves you've got hundreds of other songs that we could have sung haven't you that you know them all because in those schools there's such a lot of fun they get teaching them all the songs and then all come together on a friday or saturday night and do it in the church all the parents and relatives and friends come and have an absolute whale of a time so i really think we should give thanks for zark and for miz and for the team that make this possible don't you think because we are so blessed to have them in this church and to be able to serve not only the local community, but the wider community and the nation, in fact, with these, this ministry. So we want to help you close our eyes and just pray. Are you all going to do that with me? I'll lead us in a prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you praise from our hearts for Miz and for Zark and for all the team who put in so much work and give such a lot of joy to other people, but give joy to your heart and give you glory through this ministry. We pray that you would anoint all that goes on and lead them into the next things that you have for them. So that the school children and the churches in these areas that this happens will grow in enthusiasm and passion for the worship of your Son, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. It was great. So I'm just going to pray. The children will go to their groups and have a fantastic time. Lord, we thank you for them. We pray you bless them as they go to their groups and enable them to take that spirit of praise not only into their groups, but into their day-to-day. -day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning, we're going to uh, do things in a slightly different order. We're going to pray now for our world, and uh, then we're going to move into our, our worship songs, and then have the reading, and Dave's going to be preaching on this theme. Colin is going to lead our intercessions, and he's going to use a response that I think from this psalm, which I think is incredibly appropriate for prayer. The words from Psalm 62 say, Trust in him, or God, at all times. Pour out your hearts to him. And then the response will be, 
for God is our refuge. And I think the invitation to pour out our hearts is a real reminder of what prayer is about. I often do that when I'm walking the dog in the mornings. First thing in the morning, take our, our dog, which is quite lively, likes a, a long walk. I go through our country lanes where we live, and they're laden with all these beautiful leaves, every color. You can imagine all the autumnal colors. And uh, the other day I was walking along, enjoying the countryside, and uh, then came across this specimen, uh, Greg's coffee cup, just chucked out of the window of the car. <sighs> and you know, it's sort of like, what is going on? in the heart of people when we do that sort of thing. And it made me really feel I wanted to pour out my heart to God for the waste and the neglect and the violation of the beauty of God's world. And I think with COP27 coming up this week, it was particularly poignant. And you know, I think God wants us to grieve over things that are so terrible. And on a walk with a dog on your own, you can cry, <laughs> you could talk to him out loud, you can do whatever you want. But to pour out the heart, and that's the invitation in this psalm, pour out your heart to him but doing it in a way that we can trust that he is a God not only hears and understands, but he can act in ways that are beyond our imagining. So as we come to God in prayer, and Colin is going to lead us in some prayers for different things, we'd like to come forward now, Colin. I hope we will not just listen to these intercessions or pray them, but there'll be a means by which we can pour out our hearts to God. And Colin's just going to leave some space for that to happen. Let's get emotionally involved in this because they matter when God hears the cry of his people. Let's go. It's not often we get a warm-up act before the prayers. But in all seriousness, I was going to say that too often, I think, when we have a refrain in prayer time, it can just come a little bit off pat. But I really feel today we need to enter into that and to cry out and declare for God is our refuge. Because I believe in declaring, we declare it not only to ourselves, that's important, but we declare it to the powers of darkness as well. So I want us to really enter into that, as Joe said, as we come before the Lord. Let's let's. Just go for it once. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him. For God is our refuge. We come to you now, our loving Heavenly Father, who knows even before we ask what we have need of and is willing to do even more than we dare ask or think. Your world is in crisis and we cry out to you for mercy and compassion. And this morning, specifically, we bring to you the following issues which are on our hearts. We lift to you our government, and especially our new Prime Minister. We especially pray for wisdom and justice in all his decisions. We also pray for those MPs who are Christians. May they speak out in your name to make known your will. We know that it is you who places people into authority. May your will be done, and may this nation be led with wisdom, integrity, and justice. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. We lift to you all those who are struggling with the cost of living crisis. We pray for those organisations trying to help provide support to those in need. We pray for CAP, both worldwide and especially in Malvern and Lebury. We lift to you the debt counsellors and the befrienders. And we also pray for those running the food bank, the pantry at the Octagon, 
and the local community hubs in Malvern. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. We continue to pray for those facing the trauma of war in Ukraine and for those seeking refuge around the world. We pray for a miraculous outbreak of peace and reconciliation. We give you thanks for the work being led by Terry and Hannah English. Give them health, strength, vision and encouragement. We also pray for your blessing on those hosting families here in Malvern. Give them grace, patience and understanding. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. And Father, we continue to cry out to you about the climate crisis we are facing. Will you give wisdom to the world leaders meeting at the COP27 summit in Egypt this week? Give them commitment to follow through with the promises that they make. And may we do our part as much as we are able to restore your planet and bring sustainability to your creation. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. And we also bring to you those who are fleeing their homes and seeking refuge in the UK. Especially we pray for those in the migrant camps on our south coast and those who daily put their lives at risk by board, boarding small craft in an attempt to cross the channel. We ask for compassion from our cabinet ministers and wisdom in finding safe solutions for them. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Now let us pause to bring to God those things that perhaps only we and he know are on our hearts. So God says that maybe there's some who say, I find it very difficult to trust God at this time. I don't feel like it. And I feel God's word is, declare my strength. Believe it. Declare it anyway. Speak it into your own heart and to those powers of darkness. And so for all those things that we've brought to you, Lord, that are personal to us, we trust in you at all times. We will pour out our hearts to you, for God is our refuge. Let us join together now in saying the Lord's Prayer together. <clears throat> our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Would you like to stand?
by your spirit you are opening up our hearts to see you in a fuller way you are revealing more of who you are to us I pray that you would continue to do that work in those who are sensing your spirit opening up a fresh revelation of yourself of how great you are and how worthy of all praise and how trustworthy you are and worthy of all our complete hope and trust in you, whatever our circumstances. Lord, we thank you for the witness of your word to what you have done in the lives of people down the centuries. We pray now that as we hear your word read, that it would be a testimony 
to King David's trust in you in the most difficult of circumstances and that we might hear it as inspiration for our own lives and we might receive that strength to face that all that lies ahead in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much musicians and those hidden. <laughs> Sean is going to bring our reading from Psalm 62, and then Dave will bring us the exposition of God's word. Thank you. So, yes, yeah, Psalm 62, and if you want to follow it on the, in the Bibles, in the chairs in front of you, it's page 579. Psalm 62. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall never be shaken. How long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down, this leaning wall, this tottering fence? Surely they intend to topple me from my lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall not be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath, and the highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion, or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. One thing God has spoken, two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love. And you reward everyone according to what they have done. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Good morning. I feel like you've heard the sermon already. <laughs> but this is just reinforcement. Um, and as we um, just spend these next three weeks in the Psalms, um, I want to particularly encourage us to learn how to pray using the Psalms. And actually today I'm going to share some stuff and I might share a bit less now that a lot that's been shared already. Um, but I want to give us a chance to pray this and to spend some quiet praying this um, towards the end of our service. So that's where we're going. But let's first, let's first just offer this to God. Lord, come and set these words alive for us. Speak deeply into our hearts and minister to us, we pray. Amen. Over the last few weeks, we've seen some of our national leaders face significant leadership challenges, haven't we? Um, the pressure they've been under from MPs, from the public and most of the media, social media, has been immense. I just can't imagine what it must have been like for Liz Truss a couple of weeks ago when all those attacks were going on. And whatever you thought about her policies, and I'm certainly not going into that now, I actually felt quite sorry for her by the end. And I saw a woman who was just um, being crushed under the pressure. Well, today, in today's psalm, King David is too a leader under pressure. 
He too was in a really stressful place when he wrote these words. And I would really love you to grab your Bibles. Do grab a Bible and turn to Psalm 62 because we're going to be dwelling quite closely in these words. Do have it open in front of you. We don't know exactly the circumstances of him writing this psalm. We can only piece together what's going on from what he's written here. But it's clear that as David writes this, he's in a really tough place with evil opponents around him seeking to attack him and discredit him and bring him down. Have a look at how he describes it in verses 3 and 4. It says, how long will you assault me? You know, this wasn't something that was just happening. It's been going on. He was worn down from people attacking him. Would all of you throw me down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? Surely they intended to topple me from my lofty place. It sounds very familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, they take de- great delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. You know, I love that description of himself there. It's such a vivid picture, isn't it? A leaning wall, a tottering fence. Here's a tottering fence. I just have a look at that. You know, where it was, you know, before rigid and upright and holding firm, it's now lost its anchor. You can imagine it just buffeting about in the wind, can't you? Bouncing around, struggling to stand upright, just waiting for that big gust to come and and push it over or that big cow perhaps to come and give it a nudge. A tottering fence. Such a vivid description. And that's how King David described himself. That's how on the surface he felt. He felt vulnerable and in danger, and that it wouldn't take too much to push him over and topple him. He couldn't take much more, was in effect what he was saying. I wonder if some of us here relate to that description today. I wonder if as you come here to church this morning, actually the reality is that inside you're a tottering fence. We may not be a leader under fire like King David, but we live in a world currently where there are so many pressures. And I know from talking to many of you, many of you are struggling with unimaginable pressures. And it's tough. Cost of living crisis, wondering how we're going to make ends meet. The pressures of family life, struggles in relationships, addictions, bereavement, poor physical and mental health, stresses at work, the list could go on. As we sit here today, some of us may well feel like that picture. We feel fragile and under pressure, battered and vulnerable, not sure whether we can keep going. Not sure whether we can keep standing or whether the pressures are just going to overwhelm us and knock us over completely. And if that's you today, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to hold on and to listen and to take courage and encouragement from David's psalm today, which I think gives us, as we've already shared, some ideas of how we can pray and how we can seek God in such times. For although David, on the one hand, described himself in verse 3 as a tottering fence, look what he says in verse 2 and in verse 6, the end of verse 2 and verse 6. He says, I shall never be shaken. I feel like a tottering fence, but I shall never be shaken. How is he able to so confidently say those things? And declare those things despite what's going around him. Well, let's unpack this psalm to see um, how he does that and what we can learn from him. And we, we start at the very beginning because the psalm doesn't start with him looking down at his problems, does it? But it starts by him looking up to his saviour, his deliverer and his God. Starts, truly my soul finds rest in God's. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall never be shaken. 
You know, he begins by declaring the truth of who God is, declaring that God is trustworthy and choosing to look up and focus on that, not down at his problem. And that changes everything. You know, I may feel like a tottering fence, he says, but the truth is, as I look up, my God is my rock and I will not be shaken. I may feel like I'm under attack from all sides, he said, but the truth is, is that my God, as I look up, is my fortress and will protect me and will deliver me. God is my rock, my fortress, my salvation, my deliverer. To those of you who are feeling like a tottering fence this morning, I want to say to you, look up. God is your rock. God is your fortress. God is your salvation. God is your deliverer. And in him, you will never be shaken. How is David able to have such confidence and say that? I think partly because he remembers what God has done in the past. You know, I think he remembers where God has delivered him in the past when he fought Goliath, when he was protecting sheep, his sheep from the lions. You know, God's faithfulness in the past causes him to call on that in the present times. But also I think a bit like what Colin was saying, you know, it's also a choice, isn't it? Because in those difficult times, it's easy to allow the doubts to come. Is God really there? Does he really care for me? Is he really on my side? Is he really good? Can I really do what he's called me to do? You know, those are doubts that the enemy, Satan, will try and put in our minds to twist the truth, to pull us away from God, to push the little tottering fence that is us over. (laughs) Lovely to see you. (laughs) You never know what's going to happen. And sometimes we have to choose to stand in the truth, to declare that truth, to state that truth, even if we don't all perhaps always feel it in our hearts, even if we're feeling something different. And as we state that truth, that as we trust the truth rather than our feelings and and, and bring this to God in prayer, you know, our faith increases. And also what Colin was saying, you know, banishes the darkness. It battles against the forces of darkness that are trying to draw us away from God. And that's what David is doing here. He's declaring, speaking out truth. And actually, if you look at verse 6, he's almost um, talking to himself to say, believe it. You know, slightly different in verse 5. He says, yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. It's, he's speaking to himself to say, choose that even if you don't feel it. Sorry, I should have put the slide on this. There's the the slide. (laughs) Look up and fix your eyes on God. Declare the truth. But secondly, um, as we've already shared as well, you know, what he does then goes on to do is after he's focused on God, he does actually cry out to God of his own situation in verses three to four that we've already looked at. And actually then that verse that we were praying, trust in the Lord at all times, O people, pour out your hearts to him. When he's teaching others to put their trust in God, he encourages them to pour out their hearts to God. Telling God the injustices and the struggles we're facing. Telling God our deepest emotions, how we really feel, what we might not tell other people. Letting out our pain and our hurt to God crying out to God and being honest with him, crying out for what we want him to do. You know, God is our refuge. He is our fortress. He's our safe place that we can pour out our hearts to him. And I think that's really profound because so often when we're under pressure, actually, we can either bottle it up or we can take it out on others. And actually what God says is, here's a safety valve. Pour out your hearts to me. Pour this out. Pour out exactly what's going on. I can take it. I'm a safe place. And as we do that, I think in return, what we receive is comfort and peace. Peace that goes beyond understanding. We find new strength and hope. You know, pouring out my heart to God is something I've really learned to do 
in recent years, and I found it quite profound. Don't be afraid of telling God what you really <laughs> is going on in your heart. And then thirdly, I want to talk about waiting in silence. You know, the first line of this psalm actually is not an easy line to translate. And if you look at different translations of the Bible, you'll see quite different things. And actually, perhaps a more accurate translation of this first line is this. My soul wait in silence for God only. My soul wait in silence for God only. Now, waiting in silence is quite a hard thing to do, isn't it? Um, and yet I think it's a really powerful thing to wait in silence for God. So often we can come to God full of words, and at times that's right, and when we're pouring out our hearts, that's right. But sometimes, actually, we need to then stop and just wait in silence. Some of my most difficult times, you know, that's all I've been able to do. Sitting in silence with my holding cross, holding my cross and saying, God, I'm here and I can't do anything else, but I'm trusting you. It's an expression I came across um, as I was preparing for this, talking about surrendered silence. I love that phrase. And the more I've been, I've been trying to dwell on that this week, surrendered silence. When actually we come to God with open hands and we say, God, I can't fix this. And actually I'm handing it over to you. We're surrendering everything to God. And we're saying, I'm not putting my trust in anything else anymore. And that's the big emphasis of this psalm. You know, actually, again, different translations bear this out more. But it's about trusting in God alone. You know, verses 9 and 10 talk about other things that you can trust. I haven't got time to go into that, but talk about trusting in people, trusting in riches, trusting in wealth. And sometimes, actually, so often we trust in our own intellect, in our own good ideas, in our own strength. But actually, God says, actually, you've got to trust in me alone. And you've got to let go of that stuff and come open-handed in surrendered silence to trust me alone. I too was going to talk about having surrendered silence on my dog walks. <laughs> I was having some surrendered silence this morning as I uh, walked Rolo around the common and it was, if anyone was walking out this morning at about eight o'clock, it, um, it was very misty and I suddenly got disorientated in the common and actually there was so much fog around, I didn't know where I was. And I thought that's quite a good illustration, but I surrender, I surrender in this mess to God. Um, but it might be actually on a walk. It might be actually lighting a candle and sitting in silence. It might be holding a holding cross. It might even be just saying a sentence over and over again. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My fortress, I shall never be shaken. But I think what happens when we have surrendered silence is sometimes God begins to get through to us in ways which he can't otherwise. We're letting go, we're letting, letting go of everything else we're trusting in. And we're saying, God, I need you to do this. And it's those times sometimes I think that God meets us most deeply. He fills us with fresh perspective. He may speak a word into us which just encourages us. In those times often we can just find, because of the mystery of God, new hope and new strength and new peace. And we wait in surrendered silence for God to come through, putting our whole trust in God's. David finishes the psalm again, declaring truth, doesn't he? You know, declaring truth, he says at the end, one thing God has spoken, two things I've heard, that you, O God, are strong and that you, O Lord, are loving. Surely you will reward each person according to what he has done. You know, what he says at the end, he says, I want to remind you, I'm reminding myself that God is a God of power who can change things. 
God is a God of steadfast, unfailing love who loves us. And just because we may be going through trials, it doesn't mean God doesn't love us. And also God is a God of justice, that even if we don't understand, I think that's unfair why we're in this position. We trust that actually God is a God of justice and one day he'll put it all right. Maybe some people today here need to just remind yourselves of that. God's a God of power. He's a God of unfailing love. He's a God of justice. We're going to pray this. I'm going to give you a chance to pray this. And the way we're going to do this is uh, we're just going to go through these three things. We're going to start by fixing our eyes on God and declaring the truth. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to play a, a song. I'm going to play a song which is based on these words. And as you hear the words of those, as you watch the pictures, just dwell in the truth of who God is. He is your rock. He is your salvation. He is your fortress. We start by looking up to God and dwelling in the truth. Then after that, we're going to have a chance to pour out our hearts to him. And then we're going to have a time of surrendered silence. It's rushed. I want you to go and practice this at home. I had a lovely, lovely conversation with someone on Friday who was here at the Thursday service. And they said to me on Friday, they said, I went home and I sat in silence at home. She did say she'd fallen asleep as well, but that's okay. <laughs> But actually, you know, she's been going through a really difficult time. And actually, it was clear that in that silence she'd gone and had at home, God had met her and brought her new strength. So what we're going to do, a mini practice now, but I want to encourage you to go and do this at home and just see what God does, maybe even daily for some of you, for all of us. But let's learn to pray the Psalms. So we're going to first just um, hear uh, this song. Um, and just as you do dwell on the truth of who God is and allow God to speak my soul finds rest in God salvation a fortress strong against my foes and I will not be shaken though lips may bless and hearts may curse and lies like arrows pierce me I'll fix my heart on righteousness I'll look to him who hears me oh him, hallelujah, my delight and my reward. Everlasting, never failing, my Redeemer, my God. Find rest, my soul, in God alone, amid the world's temptation. When evil seeks to take a hold, I'll cling to my salvation. Though riches come and riches go, don't set your heart upon them. The fields of hope in which I sow are harvested in heaven. are feeling like a tottering fence today or if you come here with with issues and you know just burdens then I want you just to open your hearts and pour out your cries to God in the silence
If your life is fine for you, then actually think of someone else who actually you can pour out your heart on behalf of or something in the world. And just speak to God about that. But just in just for a couple of minutes, let's pour out our hearts to God. Tell God our deepest emotions. Tell God what's really going on. Cry out to him. just where you are I invite you to sit in surrendered silence just you might like to open out your hands just a sign of your openness saying God I'm here and I'm trusting you alone and just sit in the silence and just allow God to do what God wants to do it might be that he speaks to you a word of encouragement it might be he just strengthens you it might be he just puts something for you to do on your hearts, but just sit in surrendered silence and allow him to meet you. sense you know, God particularly wants to say something you may feel like a tottering fence you may feel as though you can barely stand but I am your rock and your refuge I am your fortress you will never be shaken trust in me because I'm powerful I'm a God of unfailing love and I'm a God of justice to be able to declare publicly that we trust in God is in itself a hugely transformational thing. So we're going to use the simple response to words that rephrase the creed at the church, what Christians all over the world believe, what people in the persecuted church are stating this very day. They believe and trust in God. So would you join with me in standing to do that now? Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I we believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again. We believe and trust in him. 
Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And if there's anybody who feels they would just like prayer to cement what God is doing in your hearts today, then please do come forward as we close the service and have a time for just maybe without words, just to pray that the Holy Spirit would do what only God can do in you and through you. 
So may the peace of God, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and in fellowship of the Holy Spirit and his Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. fence, usually because a post has snapped and the fence is falling over. One, and I, I had a lot of those when we moved into the farm where we live now. You can put another post in next to the broken post, concrete it in, bolt them together, and they become as strong as new again. And I just feel God saying, there's some people here who are saying, I can't do this. I can't do this on my own. I'm broken. And God says, I want to come and be your grandfather. Well, father post probably, but grandfather post in this analogy. And I want to be bolted to you to strengthen you and to give you back that firmness and that strength again to be functional. Mm -hmm.